This presentation will outline some considerations in regards to a workflow involving Logplot, Rockworks, and the Autodesk Civil 3D programs. I'll be presenting 15 slides within the next 10 minutes. I hate presentations that wait until the end to tell you the price, so I'll start out with some numbers. Logplot is 700 bucks. The version of Rockworks that I'm recommending is 3000 The suggested list price of Civil 3D is 6825 All of this totals 10525 There are two main approaches for the workflow. One of these is to enter the borehole data within Logplot transfer it into Rockworks and export it into Civil 3D. The other is to enter the data into Rockworks and export it to Logplot and Civil 3D. Let's start with Logplot. I'll describe the basic concept of how Logplot works, then I'll show how data is manually entered into Logplot. Next, I'll show how templates or layouts are designed within Logplot, and I'll talk about how Logplot compiles the data into a graphic strip log. The basic idea behind Logplot is that it takes the data for a given borehole and uses a template to determine how this data should be displayed. The data entry screen consists of a series of tables for each of the data sets such as lithology, stratigraphy, fracture orientations, geotechnical measurements, geochemical values, etc. The data for each borehole is stored within an ASCII text file. There is no database per se. In theory, you could bypass the data entry screen by manually entering the data into a text file. The template designer is a layout utility that provides a means to design a strip log featuring a header, a footer, and a body. This designer is something that most people only use once for a given project, which is a good thing because it can be a fairly tedious process. We recommend that you start out by selecting an existing template that's close to what you want and then add or remove features rather than starting out from scratch. There's a button within the data entry screen that converts the borehole data to a diagram based on a designated template. It is possible to use the same data file with different templates. For example, you might use a data file that includes all of the borehole data with a template that only shows depths and lithology. Conversely, you might use the same data with a different template that shows just rock quality. In this way, you can produce specialized strip logs without re-entering the data. Logplot can plot infinitely long strip logs if your printer is capable of continuous output, or it can be split automatically into multiple pages. The Rockworks product does a lot more than log plot. I'll start with an overview, followed by a description of our database structure. Next, I'll talk about transferring borehole data between Rockworks and log plot. I'll describe how diagrams are exported as DXF files to Civil 3D, and I'll show how to export Rockworks borehole data to Civil 3D using shapefiles. Rockworks is a beast. It's the result of six people working for 30 years, day in and day out. We split it into functional levels as follows. Level 1 is free, and it includes the Earth apps, a collection of about 80 programs that plot data within Google Earth. It also includes our 2D and 3D plotting engines and a poster layout tool so that our customers' clients can view and manipulate diagrams produced within the higher level versions without having to buy anything. Level 2 includes utilities such as gridding, contouring, block modeling, and specialized diagrams such as rose diagrams, stereonets, piper plots, Durov diagrams, and so on. Level 3 allows the user to plot simple strip logs and cross sections. Level 4 includes modeling capabilities for lithology, stratigraphy, geochemistry, and geotechnical properties. Now, levels 3 and 4 store the borehole data within a single MDB file. This is the same format used by Microsoft Access. In fact, 
You can simultaneously edit or examine the data using Access while using Rockworks. Level 5 provides simple scripting capabilities, SQL database instead of the MDB file, and a utility called the GIS link that streamlines interactions between Rockworks and Esri products. Rockworks is a cornucopia of 3D GIS model filtering and volumetric tools that are aimed at the mining, petroleum, civil engineering, hydrogeology, and environmental markets. As I mentioned before, levels 1 through 4 use an MDB format, while level 5 provides an option to use SQL instead for larger, more robust data handling. Everything that we do including our database structures, algorithms, and file formats are non-proprietary. We have no secrets. You can add your own fields and tables to the database. Rockworks won't necessarily be able to do anything with this data, but it's there if you need it for other specialized applications that you might construct in-house. Just don't rename any of our tables or fields. Transferring data between Logplot and Rockworks can be done in several ways. You could enter the borehole data into Logplot and transfer that later into a Rockworks database. You could export data from Rockworks into Logplot. You could enter the data directly into the MDB or SQL files used by Rockworks. This is an important consideration if you're planning on creating smartphone, phablet, or tablet applications for in-field data entry. You could also enter the data into Excel and suck it into Rockworks. Exporting Rockworks diagrams into Civil 3D is fairly straightforward. You select the File, Export, DXF option from our 2D or 3D plotting utilities, and the program will automatically launch Civil 3D if it isn't already running and load the DXF. The problem with this approach is that it's a dumb diagram. Civil 3D doesn't know what the colors within these strip logs represent. You can't adjust the ISO level of this model to show higher levels of whatever this blob represents, such as soil compaction. To export strip log data to Civil 3D, we must use the data export tools to create shape and their associated SHX and DBF files for a selected parameter. In this example, I'm exporting lead contamination values for all of the boreholes in a Rockworks database. The next step is to open the Civil 3D task pane, select the appropriate data connection, and you'll be able to see the individual sampled intervals within the Civil 3D viewing window as well as the data table. If you click on points within the map, you can see which borehole contains that point, what type of parameter it represents, in this case lead, the lead concentration value, the depths of the sampled interval, and the XYZ coordinates for the interval endpoints. I've flown through a lot of information in a very short time. In the process, I've glossed over a lot of details and considerations for the sake of brevity. As a consequence, it may look easy to set all of this up. Well, it's not easy. Designing a complex log plot template can take an entire day. Synchronizing the data fields between Rockworks and Logplot for a project involving lots of data sets can be frustrating. Figuring out what to do with the shapefile data within Civil 3D requires considerable experience. Consider that you're essentially merging the disparate worlds of 3D GIS, 3D modeling, and 3D CAD. That's no small task. My recommendation is to tackle this in stages. Start out by exporting simple Rockworks strip logs as DXF files into Civil 3D. Then tackle complex strip logs within Logplot. Next, work with the data transfers between Logplot and Rockworks. Finally, play with the shape data in Civil 3D. Good luck and thanks for listening.